So after the Book of Boba Fett made the bold and bizarre and completely understandably controversial decision to make its not only its best episode, but its second best episode of the show about Boba Fett, just two episodes of The Mandalorian, The Mandalorian's newest season doubles down with this bizarre creative decision making and makes the best episode of season three so far, so far, just an episode of Andor. It's, it's, it's really, really bizarre. I love this episode. Just to be clear, I love this episode. I love that this also felt somehow, which I never would have thought, reminiscent of The Last of Us, which just decided in its third episode to bookend the episode with the main characters that you're following, and then just for the chunk of the third episode, which is just so early in a season to do this, and just go, here's a random story about two other characters, and it's going to be so well written and so well crafted, you're going to wonder why the rest of the season isn't like this. And just, it's like, did someone come in and go, I have this script and they go, we already filmed Andor. And they're just like, oh, oh, well, I made this incredibly nuanced, political, thought provoking, terrifying story of people in the universe of Star Wars. And they go, I guess we'll just put it in the Mandalorian. And they're like, well, it doesn't really fit tone wise with what we're going for. There aren't any big monsters. No one gets shot in the face. There aren't any pulpy action scenes. The dialogue is well crafted and well written. It just has a veneer of terror and just like a, a feeling of unsettling horror throughout all of it. This really doesn't fit the Mandalorian, but you know what? Let's just put it in the Mandalorian because I guess we just make great episodes of other shows in shows that they shouldn't be in. I guess that's just what we do here at Star Wars. And as far as I'm concerned, I love it. One might say, this is the way. So to be clear, I do understand that these aren't characters from Andor and it isn't an episode of Andor, but my lord does it feel like an episode of Andor. It is so nuanced, it is so morally grey, it is so politically kind of focused. The characters and their motivations and just the plot and the story feel so much like Andor. I loved it so much. I found it overwhelmingly exciting. But, just like the Book of Boba Fett doing another thing, it was mildly jarring at first where it cut away to these new characters. And then at just like a certain point I went, ah, oh, this is why, because I mean, this is a very late review. I'm like three to four full days behind. So, I had heard that this episode didn't have the Mando slash Baby Yoda stuff that we're all just wanting to, you know, get our dirty, greasy Star Wars loving hands on. Just, it wasn't focused on them. I actually just presumed that meant we focused on Bo-Katan because that made sense. I was like, oh, they'll separate ways and she'll go do a little mission and we'll follow her, but it will still follow that formula of a Mandalorian episode. We're just following a different Mandalorian, which I thought would be really exciting and interesting, but I'm actually really happy with what we got. Like I love, love, love this episode. It is so good. Is it completely misplaced in this season? Maybe, probably, but hopefully at some point later in the season, this is going to kind of make sense while we follow these characters, or it is just a slice of life in the universe and they didn't know where else to put it. So I'm fine with that too. I will quickly, quickly discuss the book ending of the Bo-Katan uh, Mando stuff. I do, do not understand why she didn't tell Din Djarin, uh, that there's a giant mythosaur creature in the waters. She's like, did you see some kind of mythical creature that might be very, the, the, the beautifully and not completely childish named mythosaur, some kind of mythical dinosaur that's in the ocean. You didn't, you didn't see a thing that might be alive or whatever. And he's like, nah, I was passed out. You didn't notice that as you dragged me out of the water when I was clearly unconscious and I've been lying here unconscious for minutes or hours or whatever. As you just stare into the ocean as if you have seen some kind of, you know, world changing, life changing dinosaur that is some kind of myth ickle creature no i did not see anything and she's like well i didn't either why, why did i even mention anything i didn't see anything either why lie bo -Katan? why why i don't understand why too many rhymes i'm starting to sound like dr zeus i can hear it as soon as i say it i can hear it they're never planned don't ever think that anything i do here is planned it's just that's just not how i roll sometimes it's planned but other times I just watch an episode of Andor and I go, I need to yell into the void and hopefully the void could 
like and subscribe and comment uh, their thoughts on this episode of the Manda and or Ian. And then we end the episode with Bo-Katan joining the ranks of the Mando Death Watch Society, or whatever they call themselves nowadays. And it's, that's just really exciting. I love that Bo-Katan is going to be a big part of the season. That's really, really exciting. But who cares? Shut up, Mandalorians. This is an episode of Andor, so let's talk about Andor stuff. Politics. People being absolute monsters. There are words for these people, but I don't swear on this channel, because if I... If I let that, you know, if I let loose with that, I will have to beep out just like every second word when I describe some of the characters in this episode because one of them is a real. So we finally get a look of Coruscant in the Mandalorian and it is gorgeous and beautiful and exactly how you think of it from the prequels. The one thing this episode of Andor does compared to the actual show Andor is it makes Coruscant kind of look beautiful and amazing. In Andor they made it really really horrible, really kind of stale and grey and it just had this like vibe and feeling about it that just felt really upsetting like the government was just like awful and evil but now we are under the reign of the new republic everything is bright and colorful and beautiful the way we remember it from the prequels seeing some shots and moments i was like this feels like a scene from the prequels i absolutely love and am equally horrified by the idea of all of these ex-empire kind of workers and scientists and doctors and technicians and communications officers or whatever all kind of coming into the new republic and us rehabilitating them i say us like i'm from the new republic but this episode made me go i'm just gonna stay on the outer rim with Jin Jaren and shoot monsters in the head because no animal deserves life unless it looks sentient to the human sentient be. If you're a big monster, I'll shoot you in the face! Because that's the Star Wars way. Because the New Republic, whilst being completely amazing and awesome from the side that the sequels give us, it's like, it's the Rebellion, but... I mean, we never really got an idea of what the New Republic looked like. We never really understand how they work and operate politically. The sequels just didn't give us any of that. And so to see this side of it, I feel like this is the most we've ever seen. And it makes me hate them. It makes me feel really uncomfortable, which was really interesting because for the whole episode, following all these ex-imperial officers, especially, I don't remember her name, let's call her lady main character and then man scientist main character. Mrs. Communications Officer, the whole episode, I'm like, I don't trust her. I just don't trust her because this scientist guy feels like he's prime material to be manipulated and twisted by another character because he is so hellbent on learning, on science, on just trying to figure out stuff. And like, he's so obsessed with like trying to learn and grow and new discoveries and all the science scientific stuff or whatever. And I love that type of character that is so hell bent on trying to learn and new stuff and trying to figure out stuff and try and kind of change the world with all this science brain stuff or whatever. But he was going so far in one way and the empire kind of shaped and molded him to do it for like nefarious evil empire reasons. So I love this whole episode had this kind of just like this underlining tension that I felt like he was being manipulated again. What I never expected was that that manipulation that I was feeling was totally there. That was totally subtext in all the scenes. But because she's ex-empire, I presumed she was still with the Empire and she's like a spy, super, super deep undercover. She'd pretended to fall into this New Republic thing, hoping she'd meet somebody she can manipulate and twist and, you know, craft. And then I thought at one point when they're on that big Star Destroyer that was all destroyed and broken and she's like, this is inoperable. No one can drive this. Yet every single door they opened, it just like opened and all the technology was still working. I don't really feel like that's how it would work. I feel like if this ship was decommissioned, then just the whole ship would be decommissioned and it would be like off. Like, I don't know. Is there just like an on switch she turned on? Like, why is so much of the mechanical computery parts of the ship still working? I feel like they should have been having to like open, you know, the doors for like physically and manually and like they get in there and be like, no, this works, but I can grab bits and pieces that are just sitting here. But no, all the lights and bobs and computery flickery lights were still working. Fine. I mean, honestly, the episode was so good, I don't care. But that did... <sighs> I didn't think and go, what? I actually totally expected when all the lights were going on and clearly someone was around in the big Empire ship 
that Moff Gideon was going to rock up and like he was maybe hiding in this ship that's been decommissioned. I don't know. I thought that'd be a really interesting way. Like one of those things where you hide somewhere where people would least expect you to hide because it's like, like you wouldn't hide in the New Republic in an old Empire ship. That's madness. That's crazy. So, but no one like looks there because you wouldn't expect them to hide there. So that's where he's hiding. And he's been waiting for her to bring the scientist. And he's going to be like, we've got to do our cloning or whatever because of Palpatine slash Snoke. And we've got to get that Snokey Palpatine stuff going. Let's clone up some clones. But no, 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 we did not get that. And I'm actually really glad we didn't, even though I was super, super sure that she was evil and still working for the Empire. But the twist that she's not working for the Empire anymore but because they've got these people from the Empire who have been so twisted morally and have become so broken as people. Like, she is a twisted, horrible, torturing son of a bitch. Like, she's a monster. I loathe this woman. She's so evil. And the only reason she's like that, presumably, maybe she was just born like that. But it's kind of, I don't know, at least for me, I feel like it's implied that, like, you get all these people from the Empire and you think that you've brainwashed them back to be into the New Republic, like bloody one of those Admiral Akbar looking fish boys. He was all like, oh, I had the treatment and I feel dandy now. How And it's like, sure, 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 sure. But you've done that thing on her and you might've wiped away that empire loving, I don't know why I keep doing the, the quotation marks, but you, you take away that like empire loving part of her, but still she's twisted and broken inside to the point where she manipulates and ruins this doctor, this scientist, who all he wants to do is keep using his research to better the world, like as he says about his mother, which I did at the same time, like think when we first heard that, that that was just like a bit, like he keeps touching his ear and I'm like, is someone speaking in his ear in like something that we can't see right now? Like the whole episode, because they were ex empire people i was just super sus i'm like who's the spy where's the spy what's going on who's still with the empire i know someone's still with the empire i don't trust any of these guys and then it turns out that no one's still with the empire but because of the empire people suck and are monsters like this bloody communications officer lady is a demon lady in the human form like just a monster the fact she manipulated so much to get him in this situation to get the cops to come around and they all come and they're like look at us we're from the new hope we've got those helmets from the new hope slash the end of rogue one you're under arrest i couldn't believe it i could it was like a for me it was one of those massive huge twists from like oh that feels so obvious now but just like it blew me away i was so overwhelmed and I, like my heart sunk out of my chest. I felt so betrayed. Like, honestly, I would prefer that she's like, actually I'm evil, look. And it's like Snoke's there. And he's like, <laughs> cloning evil. And he's like, oh no, I'm part of the empire again, but I just love my scientific cloning work. I'll keep doing it. Like I almost would have preferred that as a twist for him as a character. And this twist where she betrays him and then they just like, boggle his brains with scientific lightning or whatever the hell is going on. They say it's all good, but I don't really feel like it seems like it will be that good. And then she cranks the dial up to a billion or whatever and just burns his brain. So presumably he's like a shell of himself or he dies in the process. And she just sits there smiling, eating her empire biscuits. Just, ah, oh, oh, I cannot believe how thought-provoking and interesting and fascinating and terrifying and unsettling and upsetting this episode was. All the words, all the words to describe this episode. I loved it so much and it made me feel sick inside at the end. Like the whole episode, I was so on edge because of what I expected to happen. And then when they literally did the exact opposite, but still did the thing I expected, like she's part of the New Republic, but they have evil, awful people working for them. It really threw me. It's like, oh shit, yeah. The New Republic isn't the Empire, but it's still a giant government body that has all these awful things because no matter how good the... Oh, I used it correctly that time. <laughs> That's fine. But no matter how good a government is compared to what it was before, it is still going to have those type of people slip through the cracks and rise because of the awful, awful things they do. It really upsets me. Oh my god, this was a great episode of The Mandalorian slash Andor. The Mandandalorian. I said that better before. The Mandandal... The Mand... And... The Mandandalorian. No, 
How did I get that right before? Did I or am I misremembering? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. There was actually one bright spot in this episode that isn't marred by horrible betrayal and horror and heartbreak. Wait, no. As I as I realize I'm saying this, I realize no, no. That's just the woman trying to get Professor Scientist Man you know, under her wing so she can portray him because she's a monster, a monster of a woman. But no, let's pretend for a second she isn't a monster. How good is the bit where we see the peak of Coruscant, like the peak of like the actual earth world part of it. And it's like this big mountain, but it's this tiny little rock. There's like skyscrapers going a hundred million miles up, but there's just this little rock. And she's like, that's the tallest peak in the world of Coruscant. That is ingenious. That is super interesting and fun and cool. And it's just like, yeah, you're like, oh yeah, it's a world that's just a big city for the whole world. But there must be like an earth core, like rocky landscape underneath all of this like city. And the idea that there's this big peak instead of it being this gorgeous big giant mountain, it's just a little peak. Like it's just this little, no, peak. It's, just, it's essentially a rock the size of two men just sitting there. Oh, that was super cool. Super interesting. I don't know. Uh, this show is doing so much. I just, oh, I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars and I hate this goddamn communications officer. What a bad lady.